G'day guys and welcome to Medieval Mayhem on this channel. You'll find lots of videos into the whole medieval period. You'll find reviews into other people's gear. You'll find crafting videos into making your own costumes. You'll find DIY videos into making your own furniture. You'll find how-to videos into all sorts of medieval camping and that kind of thing. We do videos for, we analyze historical events, what happened, who were the key players, and why did things turn out the way that they did. So if medieval is your thing, this is the channel for you, and you might want to consider subscribing. In today's video, we're looking at the medieval fight club Hadsucks. This particular knife is based off a range of finds that were found throughout uh, modern day Ireland, modern day England, and Germany, and parts of Western France throughout the 8th through to about the 11th century. Okay, so we have a, a modern steel blade um, as opposed to sort of a medieval style steel or iron. This probably would have been, uh, certainly the earlier versions would have been a, um, uh, a more of an iron style, probably bog iron kind of thing. Um, then the various the materials that would have been available to medieval weaponsmiths and blacksmiths would have varied and therefore the construction would have varied uh, based on the skill of the blacksmith or weaponsmith, the actual uh, geographical location and also the, um, as I say, the materials available. Alrighty, uh, and, and the time period. Okay, so we then have a bone handle. Uh, we have some nice detailing in both the pommel and also the cross guard. I like that a lot. Let's have a bit of a look at that. This particular knife is based off a range of finds that were found throughout uh, modern day Ireland, modern day England and Germany and parts of Western France throughout the 8th through to about the 11th century. Okay, so we have a, a modern steel blade um, as opposed to sort of a medieval style steel or iron. This probably would have been, uh, certainly the earlier versions would have been a, um, uh, a more of an iron style, probably bog iron kind of thing. Um, then the various the materials that would have been available to medieval weaponsmiths and blacksmiths would have varied and therefore the construction would have varied. Uh, based on the skill of the blacksmith or weaponsmith, the actual uh, geographical location, and also the, um, as I say, the materials available. Alrighty, uh, and, and the time period. Okay, so we then have a bone handle. Uh, we have some nice detailing in both the pommel and also the cross guard. I like that a lot. Let's have a bit of a look at that. So firstly, we're going to talk how... Uh, so these types of uh, saxes, as I say, were very common throughout um, Dark Age culture. Um, the whole Merovingians in, in sort of modern day France and Germany through the, um, the Jutes in, in Denmark and Norway and those kind of places and the Britons and the Celts and so on all had very similar sorts of things because they were traded and also it was just the style of the time and it actually goes a lot further into time than we might realize because there are a whole bunch of knights in the Merovingian Bible also known as the Crusaders Bible who are running around with exactly this type of knife so I don't think it was necessarily restricted per se up into the, the 10th century but, but there we go already. So we have a good quality leather uh, scabbard. Let's just talk about this for a second. It's, it's 265 millimeters long. The belt loops are 65 millimeters. Although obviously uh, based on finds and what we know about history, uh, dark age belts were only about 20 to 30 millimeters in thickness um, or, or width, I should say. So um, that gives you a, a nice sort of hang off the belt. I like that a lot. And it weighs 103 grams. Quite nice, nice piece of kit. Nice, um, well sewn together. Uh, I like that. Um, 
there's no detailing on it or anything but but it is is nice for a for a basic commercial kind of scabbard So if we're talking about this, the uh, the actual Sayax itself, and, and that's how it would be pronounced, Sayax, as opposed to Sax, which it, it's, it's like sort of spelt like. Um, right, so total of 394 millimeters long. The blade itself is 243 millimeters with a thickness of 4.75 millimeters, and the actual edge is 1.5 millimeters. So it's not sharp at all. Obviously, you could sharpen it if that's what you would like. Um, and I will be sharpening these. I've bought a couple of these and I'll be giving them to my girls to use. Uh, I think these work really well for them. It's not too big, it's not too cumbersome, it's not too bulky. It has a really nice weight to it um, and you can you can really use it and function with it. Um, keep it nice and clean and sharp, keep a good edge on the blade. I really do like this. The grip itself is 108 millimeters length and overall it weighs just 504 grams. Alright, so I use metric, I'm from a, a country that uses metric, I've always used metric pretty much. Uh, so I don't know what that is in the Imperial for my American and Canadian viewers. Uh, if you guys do know, please um, put them in the comments below. So, let's uh, let's talk about this. Uh, the cost is around about $100 Australian. I don't think that's too bad. That translates to, give or take, um, about 40 to 50 pounds sterling. And also around about the whole kind of $40 American, roughly speaking, um, which I think is pretty reasonable. Um, I like the materials and I like the, the construction. It, it really does look a really nice piece of kit. It's very like authentic looking, um, definitely not out of place. I, uh, I like the way that the, the quality of construction is good. It's not going to come apart, I don't believe. Uh, I've not had any problems with this. Um, we've been, I mean, I bought these a, now, what, a year and a half ago, two years ago. Not used all of them a lot, but, um, you know, they've, they've been on, on the costumes and stuff, and um, we've been to a whole bunch of different festivals, and so they've been traveling around in the car and in the boxes and that kind of stuff, and they've had no issues with them at all. Let's face it, in this day and age, we don't really use these sorts of things for the, the, the kind of applications they were originally designed for. But uh, I like this as a, as a piece of kit, as I say, it's, it's nice and lightweight, it's very easy to use, it it's, has a nice feel to it, um, and I, I think it's entirely suitable. Uh, I got this, as I say, for my girls, uh, who are only fairly young, um, and I really do like it, I, I think this is really good. You don't need to keep it, like, super sharp, um, but that said, it's, it's really nice. Um, and very practical so I, I really do do like this so we look at uh, the information provided the photos the description the price and the manufacturing and materials uh, I think all up we have a really solid 8 out of 10 very happy with this thoroughly recommend it and I think this is a really good uh, addition to anyone who's involved in Saxon Viking uh, you know Scandinavian reenactment sort of circles throughout that whole kind of 8th through to you know 12th century kind of thing right now guys um, I really hope you enjoyed the video please like subscribe and share I will catch you in my next video